Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and this week I've been working some more on my new terrain nodes, which are getting closer to being done. I showed a little bit about them last week, and one of the things I made for that was a real-time animated water shader to use, um, that'll come with it, that you can put on um, rivers or, you know, water that you have with a uh, terrain that you make. And the way I came up with it for doing that was uh, a new approach for me. I've made several different water shaders, but I thought this one came out or has some advantages to it that some of the other ones I've made haven't. Um, it's tileable. You can export it as a texture and build the, an identical or very similar shader in like a game engine. And it all samples from a single texture, which is nice. Um, anyway, so I want to show how I got to that point. There's going to be two steps to this. The first step is going to be making the noise texture that is used by the water shader. And then the second part is going to be making the water shader. So the first step is to make this noise texture. And all I really want to do is use a regular noise texture, um, the procedural noise texture from Blender. The problem is that this noise texture doesn't tile. So if we put the UV coordinates in here and we do a modulo on them of one and scale this up, and then let's add, we need to add something to this so that it's offset a little bit. Let's add 10. Then you can see we get seams in the texture because while the procedural noise goes forever, if you um, render any portion of it out, then, the, um, then you'll get seams at the edge of your texture. So what I wanted to come up with was a way to make this texture seamless. And while it's not perfect, I thought the simplest way to do it would just be to blend between this texture and the same texture uh, one unit over. So I actually tested that out and it worked pretty well. So I thought I'd show how you do that. So the first thing I want to do is group the noise texture so that we can make it tileable noise texture. And then we're going to get rid of those and move them in here. So we want to, we're going to want to be able to add an offset to this. We don't really need it to be 3D because we're going to render it on a plane. So we can use the third dimension as like a time value to animate the texture. So let's do a combine XYZ and it will expose Z, which we can then animate. So now we need to add some value to this just so we can do a modulo on it. We'll do a modulo one just so we can see those seams and make sure that we get rid of them by the end. Now we're going to have to have four of these noise textures in here because we're going to have to sample one for the top half of the texture, one for the bottom half of the texture, one for the left half of the texture, and one for the right half of the texture. And we'll have to adjust our UVs for all of those. So to do that, we'll make four copies like so. And that's if you hold shift when you do, or if you hold control when you do um, shift D to duplicate, that's how you keep all of the links connected. So then we'll, we're going to need our UV coordinates. And we're going to need to make a mask out of them. So let's do a separate XYZ. That'll give us these sort of gradient patterns. It'd be nice actually to make the edge a little rougher. So let's make a copy of this noise texture. And then we'll add that to, we'll add the color to our UVs and we'll uncheck normalize. This one could be 2D. And then we can scale this color to something like 0.1. That'll add some noise. Now we need to make a mask out of this. So now if we blended these textures with this mask right now, um, we'd lose all of the detail because um, the, the blend would be too soft essentially. So we want to find a nice middle ground where um, we can sharpen. We want to like increase the contrast. So there's black on one side and white on the other. And only in the middle is there the gradient instead of having the gradient go across the whole thing. So I think the easiest way to do that is going to be by running this through a map range. And we can change the range to like, I don't know, like 0.2 to 0.8 instead of 0 to 1. So that pushes the... So now there's like a black and a white strip on either side. And our gradient runs through the middle... 6.6 6 of the texture. Um, so then we can run that through a float curve so we can control this even more. 
Um, and we can just add a little more contrast to it. When I do these curves, um, oftentimes if I want to keep, you want to be careful if I if I do it like this, that everything gets brighter, right? And if I pull it down, everything gets darker. So an easy way to check that is just to watch this middle, um, this middle point on the grid and try to make sure that the the curve runs straight through the middle. At least that's one one thing I pay attention to who sometimes. You could also type in values if you really wanted to be careful about it. So we got that. We'll want to make a copy of this and connect it to the Y because we'll need one for the X and one for the Y. Now we're going to run, need to run those through a mix node or run our noise through the mix node. But first we have to set up the offsets. So let's see, we're going to need on this first one, we'll need to add a vector to it and we'll want to add um, one to the X. And then on the second one here, we'll want to add one to the Y. And then on the third one, we'll want to add one to the X and the Y. So that'll get us the four, four identical tiles around this corner right here. Let's get rid of these annotations. All right, so now we want to blend um, between all of those. And so we want to do a mix node, mix A with B, and we want to use this first gradient, I believe. But we want to swap them, maybe. Yep, so now um, you can see that the seam we have here is now gone. And then we want to do the same, but with these textures. So bottom, top, I believe. There we go. And then we want to blend on those results, like so with our y-axis mask. Now we have a sample of um, our noise that tiles forever. And you'll see a tiling if we scale this up you can see the tiling pattern. All right, if we come out of that group, we can see we have our new, we can call this noise tileable or something. Um, so we have our new noise texture and we can, if we animate the Z value, nothing happens. Nothing happened because this modulo has set to zero in the Z axis. So we just set that to like a hundred or something. So then if we animate the Z, we can see this changes. And if we animate it slowly, you can see it sort of like morphs. Um, so then I also need to connect this result here. And I didn't actually do the color, so let's get rid of the color. All right, so here's our tileable noise texture. All right, now to make our water texture, the texture for our water, we're going to want to mix several of these together. Um, we want to distort them a little bit because distorting it makes it look a little bit like water. And we can just play, I don't know, play with the settings a bit. Let's try a scale of 10, maybe. Um, then what we're going to want to do is put this in a combine XYZ. And then we're going to want to combine three of these one in each channel. Just pick a different Z value for each of these. And then we want to change the scale. So we want like 10, 20, 40 or something. All right, so this is our noise texture. Now we want to add a camera. We want to move it to the center, move it up like five or something. We want to be, have an orthographic camera with an orthographic scale of one. And we can just render that. And I my resolution is 1024 by 1024. All right, I would save the image as either a 16-bit PNG or an open EXR. And we can just save this as water noise. 
All right, now that we've done that, we can just move this to a new collection and hide it. And we can start working on our water shader. So to do this, we'll make a new material and we'll call it water. And then we'll add in, and then we'll add an image texture. And we'll open up that water noise texture. Now we wanna be able to see how the tiling works. So let's make this a little bigger and we'll scale up our texture just to make sure everything tiles nicely, which it does. And then we're actually going to, um, we're gonna to wanna to separate our texture back into two, the three different noise textures that we started with. And we're gonna to wanna to animate each of them differently. And then um, we wanna have the water be able to scroll as a whole. So let's add a UV map. And let's add to the UV map the uh, combine XYZ. And we want to say so move it on the X axis. Let's run that through a multiply node so we can control how much, say like 0.1 for now. And then we want that to go into a value node. And you can type in hashtag, no, not hashtag value, um, hashtag, fra <laughs> hashtag frame to get the current frame number. Well, now I messed it up. Add a value node, type in hashtag frame. And then if we animate this, you can see we now have our noise scrolling very quickly. Turn that down. So that so then if you have your UVs laid out correctly, if you make it from a curve or the river terrain node, then um, you can have the water flow down the stream basically. But we also want the surface of the water to sort of animate and move like ripples. And we can do that too. And the way we want to do that is by taking our frame here, and we're going to want to multiply that by some value. And then we want to adjust this texture over time. So we should we want the number to be a lot bigger because we're going to use sign. So let's type in like 15 or something. And then we're going to want to run, we're going to add our frame to that. So we can plug this in here. So by controlling this value, we can adjust how fast the time moves essentially. And then if we run this through a sign, we'll, the, it will change over time like this. So then we could make it like 0.1 and it moves more slowly. Then we're going to want to maybe multiply that by a scale value. Let's make this a group and we'll connect this value here. So let's see, we have, um, this is the frame. This is the texture. And this is the scale. So then we're going to want one of these for each of the channels. And let's plug the Y and the Z into those. And then for the scales, we'll have the first one be 1, the second one be 0.66, and the third one be 0.33. And then we're going to add all of those together. like so, which gives us this. And then we might also want to have the time flow differently on each of the textures. So let's just go in here where we have the frame and we'll multiply that again by one and we'll expose that and we'll call it time scale. So then we'll, let's make the time scale on these a little bit more. And we'll turn the time overall down a little bit. All right, now um, what we actually want to use this for is a normal map. So let's put this into a bump node. And it should go in the height. And then for the strength, we probably want it quite a bit lower. Then for the shader itself, um, if you're using cycles, you can use glass. Um, if you're using EV and you turn the screen space reflections on, you can use the 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 refraction BSDF. 
We're gonna plug this into the normal. We're also gonna want a glossy to get the reflections like so, and we can add those together. Then for this to look good, we'll want the scene world in here so that we get reflections. And I think we need to multiply our normal map overall because this value is probably huge. Maybe, I don't know. Um, oh yes, we also we'll need to turn down You turn down the roughness, make the the darker you make the glossy shader, the less of the reflection you see on the surface. And if we come back over here and we adjust this, we can slow it down even more. So there you go. That's how I made the water shader that goes with my train nodes. Um, it has an additional thing, which is the depth of the water, but that only works if you calculate the depth with geometry nodes against um, some ground or riverbed object. But if you do that, then you can use the depth of the water to, to adjust some other things like the strength of the normal map or um, stuff like that. So just to show it in a little better setting, I've added a little river landscape here. And if you go to your render settings and turn on refraction in the screen space reflections, and you go to your material and turn on screen space refraction there, then it looks a lot better. So there you go. I hope that was an interesting little look at how I put together this water shader. I was pretty happy with it for how simple it was. Um, as far as the train nodes go, I'm still working on them. Hopefully I will have them done um, for too much longer. Um, I feel like they're coming together pretty nicely, I'm pretty happy with um, how it's working out. But um, yeah, other than that, that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching.